know the story well. And I also said two sisters, Mary and Martha. And Martha was a worker. She left around the house trying to get the, the meal together and eat rice. She was distracted with all her preparation. Mary, on the other hand, was not happy at all. Martha went into the kitchen. Mary went into the room where Jesus had sat down and was teaching. And there she sat down at his feet. Now, as you picture the scene, your heart goes out to Martha. Mine does. It doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem fair to me. It certainly doesn't seem fair to Martha that her sister would not be helping her expediting the whole process and getting things done. She's going to enjoy Jesus. So, you know, it's really hard to get complaints. But Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things that only a few things are necessary, really only one. Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken from. I want Jesus to say, no, he's going to stay here, because this is where he could be. This is what's really important, sitting at the feet of the Savior and learning from him and learning about him and getting to know him. But the one thing that's necessary is that, and Mary had chosen it. Now, we all know that life's very real. And it has very real responsibilities, and we can't escape those. We shouldn't escape those. We have to earn a living. If you're a student, you have to go to school, you have to study, you have to apply yourself to math, or chemistry, or whatever you're studying. Parents have to take care of children and take care of the house. There are lots and lots of responsibilities, but what's needed in all of that is a sense of proportion, some perspective. It's, it's easy to get distracted by the chores of life. It is even easy to get distracted, and I'm speaking for myself, it's easy to get distracted by the service of the Lord. A, a person in my position can get distracted by preparing stories, lessons, doing visitations, things like that, and neglect time in prayer and personal study and simply reflecting upon who the Savior is. Very easy to get distracted. What the Lord wants us to do is certainly to be good working in, 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 in what we've been called to do, to be diligent in whatever field we are in. But, but what He really desires above all else, about Christian service and stuff, about teaching lessons, preaching sermons, and doing evangelism, but all of that is simply knowing Him, learning about Him. Getting to know him. That desire pleases the Lord. It was the heart of the psalmist. This isn't just the New Testament disposition, it's, it's the, the disposition of the Old Testament saints as well. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 72, we got a 42. As the deer pants for the water breaks, so my soul pants for thee, O God. So the Paul. He longed to know Christ. It is in Christ, he says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are given. What a simple statement, but what a unfathomable statement that is. In Christ are hidden treasures, wisdom, knowledge. It's there in Him. We look for it everywhere in this world. In the university, in the books we study, in the treasures we try to accumulate for our work and labor. And again, I'm not speaking against any of that. But if you really want treasure, it's in Christ. It's found in Him. We have Him as believers. 